My name is Riley Turner and I'm a student at South Tahoe High School. For this unit, I chose to focus my project on blood doping and its legal association to professional sporting events. In order to understand why doping is immoral, it's important to first understand the physiology of oxygen and hemoglobin in the blood, the different methods of blood doping, ways to identify usage, and the risks that accompany. In order for muscles to perform, they need a ready supply of oxygen. During high intensity exercise, oxygen is depleted and the body cannot get enough oxygen to the muscle in order for them to perform at their optimal potential. This lack of ability to get oxygen to the muscle is called oxygen depth and results in the formation of lactic acid. Lactic acid is a waste product of anaerobic cellular respiration within the muscle tissue, which can cause muscle soreness that usually is felt after a hard or long workout. Fatigue usually sets in with the onset of lactic acid production. Oxygen is carried to the muscle by two delivery systems. 3% of oxygen is carried in plasma and 97% is in hemoglobin, which is the principal protein in urethrocytes, or red blood cells. If hemoglobin amounts are increased, this will lead to increased oxygen levels that can be transported to the muscles, therefore allowing the muscles to become more fatigue resistant. That being said, blood doping is defined as the injection of oxygenated blood prior to an event used to enhance physical performance by improving aerobic capacity and delaying muscle fatigue. The body undergoes aerobic respiration in order to provide sufficient delivery of oxygen to the exercising skeletal muscles. The rate of maximum oxygen uptake depends on cardiac output, oxygen extraction, and hemoglobin mass. The cardiac output of an athlete is difficult to manipulate during competitions as the distribution is at the maximum rate during this time. In addition, the oxygen extraction is approximately 90% at maximal exercise. Therefore, the only method to enhance the physical performance left is to increase the oxygen content in the artery by enhancing the hemoglobin mass. In other words, hemoglobin concentration and blood volume contribute to hemoglobin mass. There are three types of blood doping that contribute to an increase in hemoglobin mass, including blood transfusions, injections of erythropoietin, and injections of synthetic oxygen carriers. Firstly, there are two kinds of illicit blood transfusions, including an autologous transfusion, wherein blood is drawn from the athlete and stored for future use, and a homologous transfusion, where athletes use the blood of someone else with the same blood type. In both cases, the blood is typically frozen or stored at 4 degrees Celsius in order to prevent loss of urethrocytes before being injected 1-7 to seven days before competition. The second method is EPO injections. EPO is produced naturally in the body, mostly by the kidneys, that stimulates the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. The increased activity of a urethrocyte stem cell allows the blood to have a greater carrying capacity for oxygen. Lastly is the injection of synthetic oxygen carriers or SOCs. SOCs are purified proteins or chemicals that have the ability to carry oxygen, such as hemoglobin-based oxygen carriers or HBOCs and perfluorocarbons or PFCs. Like red blood cells, they work to deliver oxygen to the muscles, increasing aerobic capacity and endurance. While the idea of blood doping appears to possess only benefits, there are significant risks that can follow as with any medical procedure. Blood doping in general results in large infusion of red blood cells that could increase blood thickness and cause a decrease in cardiac output and a reduction in oxygen content, both of which would reduce aerobic capacity. Since the human heart was not designed to pump thickened blood throughout the body, it could lead to a multitude of problems. More specifically, blood transfusions run the risk of the blood from another person having a virus. Even using one's own blood carries risks if the blood is not handled correctly or stored properly. Risks include an unnatural increase in red blood cell levels, which then raises the risk of heart attack, stroke, and pulmonary or cerebral embolism. Likewise, EPO thickens the blood, which leads to an increased risk of several deadly diseases, such as heart disease, stroke, and cerebral or pulmonary embolism. As for synthetic oxygen carriers, WADA says the risk of blood infection is high when there is not enough time to properly cross-match donated blood with a recipient. However, their misuse for doping purposes carries the risk of cardiovascular disease in addition to various serious side effects, such as stroke, myocardial infarction, or an embolism. One of the main reasons why blood doping is such a popular illicit practice is the difficulty in its detection. There is currently little known about detection for autologous transfusions, but homologous transfusions can be tested for in a method known as flow cytometry. 
By examining markers on the surface of blood cells, the method can determine whether blood from more than one person is present in an athlete's circulation. Blood and urine tests can detect the presence of EPO injections, but the window for testing is small as the injection remains in the body for a very short time. Lastly, a method of detecting for the use of HBOCs published in 2010 looks at intact HBOCs in plasma samples. In the end, while blood doping can greatly improve performance in endurance-based events, it is still perceived as cheating in terms of professional athletics.